Rob, pinch me because I, I must be dreaming. Okay, I don't. Is this working? Do you feel that? Ow. You, okay, oh. sweet. All right, cool. I'm not dreaming, mm. but it is time for another episode of JB's Bible and Bourbon Talk. Isn't that nice. amazing? That is amazing. Also, we may have a new market if we're actually able to pinch through the pinch through the yeah maybe through the power of the internet. Know. That's right. I am reach out and pinch someone. I don't think that's how it went. Or I'm don't you're gonna I'm crush crashing your head. your head. Mm -hmm. Crash, crash. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> it is time for JB's Bible and yeah. Bourbon Talk. On this podcast, we talk about things that we are passionate about. We are passionate about Jesus. We love Jesus, the Holy Trinity, everything about him, the sandals he wears, the robe he wears, the the streets he, he trods, mm. the words he speaks. We love yeah. Jesus, and we also love good whiskey, right? We do. Mm -hmm. And we like to drink good whiskey while we talk about the amazing, wonderful Jesus. Yeah. I am JB. I'm a pastor at a Reformed Church in the great state of Ohio. Moderately okay state of Ohio? Yes. And, yeah, I guess moderately. <laughs> we, so, but with me is my my entourage, my mm -hmm. my shine, my, my I don't know, cupbearer maybe. I don't know. Wow, the hand of the king. I don't know what is the. I I've always know. been. I've always been described as a one man entourage. So I don't but know if that's you a good are, thing. What you I are a bad thing. is so, fancy Rob. I am. So welcome in, everybody. I'm so glad you decided to check us out again. It is episode. Um, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, so we are back again. I am fancy Rob. I'm with JB on JB's Bible and Bourbon Talk. So you say, hey. This is the first time I'm stumbling across these guys. Weird that you picked this episode, but sure, sure. Hey, run with um, it. It's okay. Let's go. So Just Jamie, dive in. The pool in. water is warm. That's right. But I won't say why it's warm. But just dive in with just us. Dive in. Don't op just don't swallow the water. It's not a good Bad. thing. So jbbibleandbourbon.com slash social is going to have all of our social media information, all the ways that you can reach out and contact with us, um, how to watch us on YouTube and Rumble and glorious HD video, all of the podcatchers. They are free for a limited time. The limit is always. So always free in case if, if you're new and you haven't got that, it's, it's always free. So jbbibleandbourbon.com slash social. That's also going to have a link to our Patreon. If you want to come alongside us and support us in this journey, jbbibleandbourbon.com slash social is going to give you a link to our Patreon, Apostle and Disciple Tiers. That gets you time with JB and I um, at least once a month, twice a month, depending on your tier. Also gets you a great year and gift with us. At the Apostle Tier, you get to come on and do a show with us. We're really getting to the point where we're going to have a lot of guests here. JB, a lot of our um, Patreons will be coming yep. on um, to get their time in this year, and we're super excited about that. We've got got the planning stages have been going. JB Bible and Bourbon dot com slash social. Yeah, we got Mikey Conrad coming up mm -hmm. on our next episode. Yes, as a matter of factoid, and we're gonna have know. traveling JB, traveling JB um, in the Cincinnati. Maybe I'll get some dash cam footage. Who knows? I, mean, I have been great. working very hard for the podcast uh, lately. Have I've been you? doing a lot of research. Is it? Should I sound as surprised as I am? You I don't, should I don't because feel I, like don't, I normally don't work hard. <laughs> yeah, I, Rob is does all the work. Um, I do all the play, but I have found two whiskeys. Okay, two whiskeys that you may want to try. I mean, I do. Okay, so I've, hopefully, I haven't spoken too soon. <laughs> you have spoken too soon, <laughs> <laughs> but. I, I was looking up uh, strange and weird whiskeys. Great. And yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm working hard uh, using that Google search engine, using Good. the Googles. The Googles. And um, the first one I found, which is not so bad. I don't think it's mm -hmm. so bad. I think it, so it's, bad. It's definitely better than this, the, the second one I'm going to talk about. But the first okay. one is Reindeer Antler Whiskey. Okay, I'm going to need a little explanation. Okay, so this is just what it sounds like, it says okay. in this article. This is a whiskey mm. that has There's been... a whole article about it. Okay. Yes, this is a whiskey that has been infused with reindeer mm -hmm. antlers to give it various properties. Okay. It's important to note that this is actually a cultural 
tradition and not just a marketing ploy. So I can't mock it is what you're no, saying. You can't, that, that's you cannot, kind of the, the preference to don't mock this. Okay. Yeah, that Go would ahead. be a hate crime because mm -hmm. I hate it. Um, right. It says, in fact, reindeer antler whiskey is not commercially, often commercially available mm -hmm. and Shockingly. tends to stay yeah. mostly within Thailand, which is where it's made. This whiskey is designed mm -hmm. to improve overall health yeah. and vitality, and it can sometimes be used to treat health issues, too. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it says it's hard to say what it tastes like since it's not commonly found outside of Thailand. However, those who have and the writer it, of this article is definitely not going to taste it. No, there's no <laughs> no way in heck this. It's like no, it. no one can tell. Who can no, tell what it tastes like? I don't who's, know. Who's who's to <laughs> who's say? To say? <laughs> but he says those who have tried it say it tastes earthy. Yeah, but it does. Real, but it tastes real earthy, oh, robust, yeah. and mm -hmm. woody. Mm -hmm. And some even say it tastes like licorice. And I'm assuming black licorice, not the good, not the good kind. No, yeah. so. Rob, on a scale of one to ten, how likely would you be to try reindeer See, this antler is, whiskey? This is difficult because if I come in with a, I'm zero percent likely mm -hmm. to try this, and then you come in like your next one is like fox urine whiskey, then I'm, <laughs> I, I have nowhere left to go. Wait a so, minute, we, we might have a new market here: <laughs> fox urine whiskey. Get to harvesting. So I'm going to, I'm going to say. I mean, I'm probably, I'm probably a four out of 10. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, it doesn't sound it. terrible. No. You know, it, I don't like, honestly, the thing that turned me off the most is the licorice. Yeah. I don't yeah, like black I, licorice. I do not like the, the taste of black licorice. If you try it, you might dearly love it. You don't know. Mm. Now, the second. I don't know if I have enough dough to buy it. <laughs> ah, good one, yeah. buddy. Yeah. He, he's, he's catching on. That's right. Coming in. So. Huh? Like a fajita. The second one is called Fishki. Mm. It says, mm -hmm. unlike reindeer antler whiskey, mm -hmm. <laughs> Fishki is a far cry from anything that might remotely be used as a healing drink and certainly ha was a failed attempt at a marketing strategy. Listen what to this. Was the marketing strategy? It starts good. I'm going to tell you, it starts okay. good. Then, Fishki sorry. is a Scotch whiskey. Okay, I'm in. You should have stopped there. Mm -hmm. It says that was aged in a herring barrel. Uh, and unsurprisingly, soaked up a lot of the flavor of the herring at the same seen, time. Who would have seen that coming? <laughs> it says the only person known who has ever tried it reports that it was terrible. Yeah. And he's screaming it as he's jumping off the building where he had yeah. it, I think is what was happening. So that sounds like a salty, 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 um, which would be fine. If it was just salty and PD, that'd be great. Well, great. It'd be fine. Um, scale so of I, one to 10. No, scale. I see what you did there. <laughs> um, this I'm probably a uh, one. I, don't, I wouldn't try it. Um, well, I have, I have to say, I have had, have you ever had, um, fish teach your own oh like crunchy like fish skin, fish skin? Oh, see yeah. i've had crunchy fish fish skin just from you know cooking fish before yeah and, i mean that's no this was like in a bag from that's... um from singapore i believe that and sounds really good it was delicious would you say it was fantastic it was fantastic now if you ever want to try fish key mm -hmm. just let me know mm -hmm. i had it at school once anyway that feel was good about that, that. I don't. I don't feel good about any of this. Okay. You know what I would feel good about? Mm. Um, let's put something in a glass mm -hmm. that is not fishy. I have some sardines upstairs. I could throw mm. a sardine in with my first pour. You could. The question <laughs> is, should I? Mm -hmm. And the answer is no. What are you going with, my friend? I went with a local legend. Mm -hmm. The Whiskey War. Double, Ooh, double, double. double. Oat. You are um, starting off stronger than me. Um, I'm going to go into high proof, so I'm starting off a little slower. I'm also, you know, kind of embracing the time of year. It's almost football season, so I'm going with Charles Woodson whiskey. Okay. Finished in his wine barrels. I have to say the wine is better than the whiskey. Now, that being said, I'm still going to buy another bottle and that's empty so that I have it. Friends, that is marketing. There you go. This uh, episode, we are mm -hmm. finishing up our gods no, at the Look at that. 
finishing up our gods of war series so in this week we're actually looking at the idol of pleasure or the gods of pleasure when we look at these idols um i think it's kind of a, a direct result of the idea of the god of me you know as humans mm. We tend to look at how we can best be comfortable, how we can make ourselves happy, what yeah. what's most pleasurable for ourselves. We want comfort. We want to be fulfilled. This form of idolatry, these gods, um, they, they really try to ensnare us. They are devious. Yeah. They are deceptive. And they're very, very enticing. While these idols, they bring us temporary satisfaction, they ultimately leave us empty and craving for more. So before we get into today's message, Rob, would you pray for us? Absolutely. So Heavenly Father, we uh, we thank you for the opportunity to share this message tonight, Father God. I pray for those who are watching and listening whenever, wherever that is. Uh, Father, we just pray that that you call our hearts and really pull us to to identify in our lives the things that that we seek that are worldly pleasures that are things that are are not um not pleasing to you father these are easy things to fall into um for for our human sin nature father i just pray that um I pray that you be with us as as we talk through this. I pray that you be with each and every person listening or watching. I pray that you begin to work in their heart and begin to call them to uh, to repentance, to cast away the things that are are not of you, um, that are that are not pleasing to you, Father. We give this over to you, and we thank you and praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. And I, I like that um, when you prayed that we would recognize the things that try to ensnare us, and that's a good thing to keep in mind as we go through this message because we might not even know that we're entangled right. in some of these things, and so. As we go through this, as we read scripture, as we talk about these points, pray that God would open your heart Mm -hmm. uh, and your mind, open your eyes to uh, reveal those things. And we're going to look at Psalm 78 today, and I'm going to start in verse 17. Mm -hmm. It says, but they continued to sin against him, rebelling in the wilderness against the Most High. They willfully put God to the test by demanding the food they crave. They spoke against God. They said, can God really spread a table in the wilderness? True, he struck the rock and water gushed out. Streams flowed abundantly. But can he also give us bread? Can he supply meat for his people? When the Lord heard them, he was furious. His fire broke out against Jacob and his wrath rose against Israel, for they did not believe in God or trust in his deliverance. So here's the thing. God, he he repeatedly, over and over, he did great and amazing things uh, for Israel and, you know, bringing them out of slavery and and sustaining them in in the wilderness. Yet Israel's response to God providing for them was to sin even more and to rebel even more against God. So in this passage, we could say that Israel was guilty of at least two sins. First, they were dissatisfied with what God had provided. Hmm. You know, while God had given them everything they needed to live and survive in the wilderness, it wasn't enough for them. They craved something more. And the second, they thought the reason why God didn't give them what they wanted was because he couldn't. Hmm. So, and, and it's interesting that they're their cravings, their lusts became uh, their focus. It became their idol. It's kind of like, say you've had a bad day and you come home and you sit on the couch and yeah. you've had that bad day. It, it was emotionally exhausting. And oh, you grab a, a pint of Ben and Jerry's ice cream and you just sit there and eat it. And I don't know why I said Ben and Jerry's. That sounds great right now. But <laughs> you, you sit there and you eat it you know, mindlessly. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, for, for brief moments while you're eating it, because it's such good ice cream, you feel joy, right? You feel yeah. satisfaction for a moment, but eventually that hunger comes back and then mm. you still have all the issues from the day, right? Yeah. And God can provide what we need to deal with our problems day to day, the issues we face. It's pretty easy, though, to look at ice mm-hmm. cream or... it is. A bag of Doritos, right? Um, or a as, giant tomahawk steak, or ooh, giant oh, tomahawk, right? Yeah, you know. it, but we sometimes look to those things mm-hmm. as a quick and temporary fix. And the problem yeah. is, it doesn't fix the situation. They give us a brief yeah. moment of pleasure 
where we forget about our problems. Right. So, and when we're talking about um, this form of idolatry, the first point in this message, mm -hmm. the God of food promises us an occasional feast, not yeah. one that truly satisfied. And like JB sitting with his Ben and Jerry's and that's mm -hmm. incredibly fleeting. I'm opting for Tillamook it last, you know, I'm, it goes a little bit better, it lasts a little bit longer, but it's still fleeting. Um, yeah. If you've listened to us at all, you know that we can occasionally become food sidetracked um, and mm -hmm. create new and exciting things that you want to sell at festivals. Yeah. Um, that God of food, like JB said, promises that, that quick fix or what you mm -hmm. feel is a quick fix that is very incredibly fleeting. It mm -hmm. just doesn't just doesn't satisfy you. And I will say this is the idol that is probably one of the biggest in my life. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is because I worked in restaurants probably 26, 28 years. You know, I was a chef for a long time. And I was very passionate about cooking. I was very proud about cooking. I would research, you know, new techniques and uh, re do recipe development and you know, I created menus and I, I always had to make sure that the food I was serving w was beautiful enough mm -hmm. to entice people to buy it. If you think of it from a God of food standpoint, I, I was essentially creating idols, right? Mm -hmm. Like I said, food has been an idol in my life for, for a very long time. Yeah. I've always struggled with this one. And a lot well, of times he wins. Yeah, and it's just like we said in, in a previous message, right? These temples and all the cities and everything were just filled with people selling idols. Um, mm -hmm. And this would easily be one of them, right? Um, selling, you know, different different foods and different things that give you that um, brief, fleeting joy, brief, fleeting fullness um, that ultimately leaves you empty. I see your uh, Psalm 78, 17 through 21. And I'm going to raise you 56 to 59. But they put God to the test and rebelled against the Most High. They did not keep to his statutes like their ancestors. They were disloyal and faithless, as unreliable as a faulty bow. They angered him with their high places. They aroused his jealousy with their idols. When God heard them, he was furious. He rejected Israel completely. Can you imagine being told you're as unreliable as a faulty bow. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm going to start I, using that. You know, I haven't done deep study into this, but <laughs> to me, what jumps out about that is if you have a faulty weapon, a faulty bow, um, you're going to hurt yourself or somebody else, right? Mm -hmm. if, if you keep using it. Um, yeah. And that's how unreliable you are that you're actually hindering, you know, the message of Christ. I could be reading way too much into that but well also if so, you have a faulty weapon you're not yeah. prepared to fight you're not, prepared. You're not no. equipped no. uh for the battle that's in front of you and you so, could shoot somebody in the foot and no you could shoot that. somebody in the foot you could you know the bow string could snap and basically you're gonna succumb to yeah. what you're trying to fight and when we're talking about idols and you know, fallen into idolatry, you're going to yeah. be enticed and ensnared and entangled um, mm -hmm. in idolatry. When it talks about these high places of worship in this passage, right? Yeah. Um, they were, uh, they would hold festivals and yeah, at mm -hmm. these high places, they would celebrate pagan gods yeah. through elaborate forms of worship and sacrifice. And basically what they were doing is they were turning their hearts away from God and turning their hearts towards these idols. And they were basically turning it into an entertainment venue, right? They yes. weren't they weren't truly worshiping. They were doing this all for show. Mm -hmm. Um and that leads us to point 2. The god of entertainment promises us fl a fleeting circus, noise and distraction. And and that's really what you know what that passage is 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 telling us about, right? This We've made these high places. We've made these. We've made these worship experiences. Mm -hmm. um, now, if if you're truly worshiping and you have and you have the, and you have something that's also entertaining, great. This is more of you know we're we're just putting on a show to bring people in to see the show, not to actually experience Christ. Yeah, and this type of uh, pagan worship was all about pleasure. Mm -hmm. All about appealing to the senses and the yeah. carnal nature of man, and it was a distraction. Um, this would distract you from what how you should truly be worshiping. Yeah, and there are lots of distractions in this world. One distraction, yeah, would be me asking, "What's in your glass now, Rob?" That is a distraction. Um, I'm going to up the proof a little bit, a little, a lot of it. 
My last one was 80 proof, so uh, now I'm going to 120 because... Right on. I mean, let's Kick jump. it, buddy. Right? So this is the Rebel Cast Strength, the Nature Boy. Oh, I almost grabbed that one. Yeah. I almost grabbed it. But instead, I grabbed a sample bottle. Of? And that sample bottle says, a Midwinter's Night Dram. Oh, nice. I don't know what actor scene it is, you know, but it's perfect. My kitty cat yeah, glass. My kitty cat glass. So um, this type of, you know, worship, of course, like I said, it was turning people from God, distracting them from yeah. God. And Jesus, you know, tells us a similar story or a similar idea in the in the story of the prodigal son. If you would read Luke chapter 15 for us, Rob. Yep. So Luke 15, 11 through 13, Jesus continued. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got to got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. I mean, we've I, all been there. I will say that I was distracted by this midwinter's night dream. I can, I can, I can understand. But it says there he squandered his wealth in wild living. He was mm-hmm. taking his inheritance, what was given to him by his father, and squandered it. Um, and let's be honest, I know it was prostitution, mm-hmm. you know, just probably the most decadent of meals, yeah. you know, all the wine he wanted to drink. It, and it was a distraction yeah. from his father. It was yep. taking him away from his father. Yeah, literally. <laughs> literally. Like, yeah. <laughs> from a dis- distance is away from his father. And the, the the truth is these gods of entertainment, the mm-hmm. God of entertainment offers a lot of distractions to us yeah. that take us into a foreign land, right? That take us farther and farther away from God. Mm-hmm. And in those distractions, we squander the wealth yeah. of our inheritance in the kingdom, right? We, yep. we're, we're squandering it away on, you know, I, I know for me, um, for a long time, video games was uh, one of those huge idols for me. You know, before I became a Christian, I was highly addicted to uh, video games. Even after, you know, becoming a follower of Christ, video games, I would say I used to spend way, way, way too much times on time on World of Warcraft, um, EverQuest, um, and other video games, other yeah. online games or just console games, but it doesn't even have to be video games, right? Television. Right. You know, how much time do we spend on television? Hours. And I don't know what the average time is that an American, you know, uh, watches. It's got to be high. It's got to be high. Increased dramatically. I um, will tell you, it's more than one hour a week. Yeah. Which is what it a is. lot of people give God. Yeah. Now, in fairness for you, if we remove the office, it might only be one hour a week. <laughs> right. True that, um, man. <laughs> but otherwise, JB, kind of going back to the to the prodigal son, mm-hmm. um, if you look at so getting the inheritance, right? Yeah. That's that's effectively ending that relationship mm-hmm. from from the world standpoint at that time, right? Yes. You've accepted your inheritance. You're severing that that bond. You're severing that that relationship, and you're, you're basically saying, "I wish you were dead." I wish you were dead. Yeah, and and you're walking away. Mm-hmm. And obviously we all know what happens with the prodigal son, but it, it's, it's, yeah, like you said, it's saying, I wish you were dead. It's severing that relationship and it's chasing after the, the prostitutes, the alcohol, the food, the parties, the lifestyle, just, just going out and living it up. And, and it's, it's temporary, it's fleeting and it, it leads to destruction. And that's not the only one that leads to destruction. We've got one more got a pleasure to talk about. So we've talked about food. We've talked about entertainment. Yeah. I'm going to read again, part of Psalm 78, what you just read. Okay. Um, I want to read uh, verse 58 where it says they angered him with their high places. They aroused his jealousy with their idols. Uh, when God heard them, he was furious. He rejected Israel completely. And these, so these high places were not just places of just regular pagan worship and festivals, like mm-hmm. just singing and dancing and you know sacrifices, but they were places of shrine prostitution. Yeah, and so sex was involved um, in these high places, and 
So the third point, the God of sex promises us only temporary yeah. satisfaction, right? Mm -hmm. And so you know, I tell a story of one night, my wife asked me, are you going to spend tonight with me or your mistress? And here's the thing, before anybody makes some judgments, I've never cheated on my wife. I, I started dating her when I was 17. I've never had a relationship with another woman since I started dating her. But what she was referring to as my mistress that night was the video game World of Warcraft, because that's how much time I was spending on that game. And I was choosing a video yeah. game over my wife. I was choosing a computer generated world over the real world. And I know some people might listen and think there's no way I would choose a ridiculous video game over something important in my life. And you might not, you might not choose video games, but what I'm going to ask is what is it for you? Yeah. You know, what is that thing? Because uh, we can sit here and say, we don't set up these high places like the Israelites did, you know, places where sex and lust were worshiped, but mm. we do if we're honest with ourselves, yeah. you know? You think about, well, what about your computer? Mm -hmm. You know, is your computer that high place that, you know, entices you and ensnares you to uh, give in to the God of sex, you know, through, you know, pornography right. or, you know, it doesn't even have to be pornography. You know, in our society, it's it's a sex sell society where you you see these kinds of things all over portrayed, even in movies that we watch or you know, on the social media platforms that are out there, easy to find them without intentionally seeking the stuff. But the question is, when you fall into that stuff unintentionally, do you turn away? Right. Or do you let your eyes linger longer than they should? And it's a struggle, you know, because the, these God, the gods of pleasure, they are seeking to ensnare us. They're subtle. They're devious and they are deceptive. They're enticing. As we've spoken about throughout the series, God has been fighting for our hearts from the beginning because he loves us. Yeah. He doesn't want us trapped in the grip of these idols and he offers us freedom. And in his great love for us, in his never ending battle against these idols, he gives us what we need uh, to break the, the grip of these idols on our lives. Hmm. He's, he offers everything we need for freedom. And one of the things that he offers us, I think we don't utilize enough in our Christian faith. Yeah. And that is fasting. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus is the answer, and fasting is one of the ways that he equips us for, for battle against idolatry. Because in fasting, well, what happens is we empty ourselves. We yeah. should empty out the idolatry and the garbage in our lives and fill ourselves with the Holy Spirit. What it does is it creates a dependency on God that empowers us to break free from idolatry. Yeah. And so if you would go ahead and read John chapter 6 for us. Yeah, so John chapter 6, 32, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven we're replacing we're basically replacing what what could give that eternal satisfaction um with it with the temporal one with the temporary one um and and we're doing that consistently with all of these various things right that that we've been talking about and and Jesus says very clearly you know put the imitation down mm -hmm. right and and come to me yep put down the i can't believe it's not butter and pick up the right. butter is what Jesus is telling us. Butter. <laughs> yeah. So so you'll notice a theme, and I, I kind of led into it a little bit, right? So point four, jumping back to what point one was, right? The God of food promises us an occasional feast, um, but Jesus promises us his unending portion. So we're 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 going and eating that that waffle when we're missing the the all you can eat buffet. Mm. Um is eternally, you know, eternally present and, and provided by God. And, and we're looking to, you know, we're, we're, we're looking to take something that, that we create um, or that we dream up or that, you know, we, that we chase after here um, when there's so much more for us. Um, and I think the man is a perfect, 
a perfect illustration of that, right? It's sustenance. It's, it's everything that, everything that they needed, um, throughout that, um, throughout that time in the desert. And it was an unending portion. Um, they just had to follow God for that. Mm -hmm. Shockingly just could not quite do it. (laughs) No way. Um, and, and when we try to, you know, us personally, when we try to battle this God of food, Mm -hmm. um, and we talk, think about it from a, a standpoint of fasting and a lot of times people think to, to fast, you have to do like, I have to fast for a week or I have to mm-hmm. fast for a month or I can only drink water. Or I can only, you know, have air for, for lunch. Uh, mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be something that crazy. What, what I would say is in order to break that idolatry is just maybe move the, remove some of the bad foods from your diet, like sugar or, or remove the foods that you become dependent on for comfort. Yeah. So if you go to the pint of Ben and Jerry's for comfort, maybe instead of going to that pint of ice cream, mm. you, you empty yourself and you go before God and you try to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That is how we break through that God of food, that, that idolatry and going to Jesus because he does promise us that his unending portion and yeah. we can find true satisfaction, true filling in a relationship with Jesus. In John uh, chapter 10, verses 9 through 10, it says, Jesus tells us, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. That means they will find rest. The thief only com- comes only to steal and kill and destroy. And Jesus tells us, and I love this, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. And this is Jesus you know, breaking uh, through the idolatry of of entertainment, because the God of entertainment promises us a fleeting circus, that noise, that yeah. distraction. But Jesus promises us greater joy. That's point number five. And so when we think about breaking this idolatry and, and the idea of fasting or fasting from entertainment, we follow what Jesus did. And what Jesus yeah. did in scripture, it says, Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and he mm. prayed. So he withdrew from the noise. He he went away from the, the crowds and the demands of society and he put his focus on his relationship with God, yeah. right? And so for us, that's, that's turning off the TV. Mm-hmm. That's logging off of Facebook or turning down the music or unplugging the game console, whatever it is that is distracting us. We have to turn off the distractions and then turn our eyes to God. And so if we look at um, then the final uh, way to battle idolatry, Matthew chapter five, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away, it is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It's better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. And I love that basically Jesus is saying, don't look, don't touch, right? And so the last point of this message is that the God of sex promises us temporary satisfaction. Hmm. But Jesus promises us his permanent presence. And so our need for intimacy can only truly be fulfilled in a relationship with Jesus. It's not enough, though, to remove these things from our lives, to fast from them. If you just remove them, you know, there's going to be still an emptiness within you. The purpose of fasting and removing this, these things is to draw yourself closer to God. So as you fast, As you empty yourself, you should be filled, Hmm. not with food, not with entertainment, not with lust, but be filled with God. Allow his Holy Spirit to fill your desire for food. Allow his joy to fill you so that you don't run after fleeting performances and entertainment. And allow his Holy Spirit to change your understanding of intimacy. Hmm. Amen. And I think with that, JB, we'll be right back with yeah, our buddy. major pour. 
And we're back. Uh, Welcome back. Yeah. It what a feels, break. Yeah, it feels like weeks. Um, like I don't know about you. Hibernation not, almost. Right. I feel like my hair's at a different length. Um, yeah, it's a strange, we don't strange. Know. We don't know. Um, you know, hey, thanks for coming back and uh, staying with us through the cork pops. Um, we have one that we're, uh, yeah, we're super excited about today. So this is uh, a featured pour that we have had in our glasses several times. Um, various things from this distillery and and to our surprise as we were doing some episode planning we haven't actually featured them yet so yeah it's crazy we, we each have a recently opened bottle yeah and we have <laughs> king's family Ryconic honey cask finished yeah this so, is a favorite in the jb household yeah, for sure absolutely um, I love this one. JB introduced me to this one. And it wasn't an awkward introduction. Like sometimes you're like, I you, have a you, lot of those. Like you have two friend groups that come together and you're mm -hmm. like, Hey, this is this friend group. And the, and it's really weird, but no, mm -hmm. this, this was a very natural and organic kind of, mm -hmm. Oh, they got along really oh. well, really quick. Oh, yeah. we are now friends. That's right. Best friends. So, We're the two best friends at any, did we just become have. best friends? I think we did. So, <laughs> so this is from, again, the King's Family Distillery. More yeah. about them in a second. It's available seasonally. It's their signature top shelf rye whiskey, Ryconic, aged um, in two separate barrels. And then it is finished in honey cast. So it's a 95% rye mash bill. This particular offering of it that JB and I have is a 106.8 proof ABV 53.4 aged six years. 10 months this one's going into first grade here in the yep. next couple of weeks so it's definitely you know it's up it's there. ready it's ready again mash bill 95 percent rye it is that double cast <laughs> it's got its lunch box it does he's so excited <laughs> i remember when i was uh going into kindergarten i got a heathcliff lunch box oh, and i i nice. thought it was the most amazing thing ever that does so. sound amazing yeah i Anyways. can't remember what lunch box i had probably the jetsons i don't know i was lame so um, a little bit more about uh, King's Family. So King's Family Distillery, again, as everything I read on here directly from their website, King's Family Distillery nestled in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains, mm -hmm. just outside of Pigeon Forge. It is the area's premier distillery and features a diverse lineup of award-winning whiskeys vodkas and liqueur husband and wife team justin and gar king kara kara i apologize come on realize their research. dream i know realize their dream of creating one of a kind top of the line i like that alliteration one of a kind top of the line spirit brand in 2018 and you know what they don't look back you don't look back mm -mm. i mean if if we learned anything from from lot and his wife don't look back yeah don't, don't. Look back. And, and they've done well in not looking back yeah as they've looked forward, they've, they've created, you know, I love how it says it's nestled mm -hmm. in the foothills of yeah. the Great Smoky Mountains. It makes me, I, I want to believe, right? I want to believe that Proofy the Bear forages, right. you know, around King's Family Distillery, he does. searching for his honey cask. And, and when um, he finds it, he's so happy so because happy. yeah, it's a great whiskey. I mean, who wouldn't be happy? Um, so I'm going to jump back because I forgot to talk about the MSRP on this one. It's, oh. we can't remember 89, 95, something like that. It's around a hundred bucks with tax title out the door. You're, you're driving a it home. It's in your garage, right? Yep. Um, delicious for that on the screen. I'll actually have what the MSRP is, but it's around a hundred bucks after tax. So one that's definitely worth that, uh, worth that price point as yep. you're going to uh, hear more about. Uh, as we pour this out. So JB, yeah, I think buddy. we should uh, pour some out. I have some already poured. I, I want to step ahead and had it pre-poured. Proper planning prevents mm -hmm. poor performance. Thank you. Also, I'm um, properly pressing the record button. Um, <laughs> that's never <laughs> happened another, to us. That's never, properly pressing the record button? No, I don't think it has. So <laughs> <laughs> we have never made a single mistake no, on this, no, uh, on this once. podcast. Um, so I've had this one a few times, right? Mm. Obviously every, every batch is going to be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Um, this one, that's not enough in my glass. I'm telling you right now. No, I went with a very lame pour. I so, need a little bit more in there. 
have at it and I'm going to talk a little bit about what I'm picking up on the nose. So yeah, it's that great, I, let's hear it. That great funky double rye, right? So I'm picking up a, a good mm. amount of, I'm picking up a good amount of mint, but it's more of that fresh green yeah. um, than the, than the really upfront mint smell. Um, but then be, I don't know if it's the honey, I don't know mm. what it is, but it has that sweet apple crispness. Mm. Um, yeah, that I don't remember picking up mm -hmm. um, in in their previous batches necessarily. It's not as not as uh, strong and, and forward as this. Yeah, no, hundred percent. You get that. I was gonna say too that apple on the nose, and then you yeah. get that the sweetness of the honey and the uh, the wonderful spice from the rye. It's yeah. just this beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, nose. Mm -hmm. I I mm. could. I could just sit nosing finished rise, good finished rise, I think, all day. Do you think? Occasionally. He hear me out. Okay. Hear me out. Yeah. The Israelites mm -hmm. scouting the promised land. Sure. Right? Mm -hmm. Take a smell. There's a... Okay. Like, I, do you I'm... think, mm -hmm. you know, they said it's a land flowing sure. with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. I like to believe. <laughs> Somehow, yeah. this this is the honey they smelled. Okay, because this is an amazing, amazing. Uh, I mean, just a, like that colony of bees has been around for a very yeah. long time. It's you miraculous. Know, um, like they're like, they "Hey say. Moses, yeah, you gotta get you some of this." Mm -hmm. But he didn't get to go into the promised land. Right. Thou never shalt got to experience get thyself some of this. That's that was possibly a commandment. Maybe there were originally 15 commandments and one of the tablets got dropped. I give mm. you these 15, <laughs> 10, uh, 10 yeah. commandments. <laughs> <laughs> if you know, you know. No, uh, the the nose on this is so great. Um, so good. In fact, it, it's so good that I just can't wait. I just, I just need to dive in, in, right? Mm. 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 It's it's an explosion mm. of flavor. So I get Gosh. up yeah. front. I get I get that sweet from the honey. Really comes mm -hmm. uh, prominently up front, and then and then you just get punched in a very good way with that rye or with that yeah, yeah with the spiciness from the rye. Mm -hmm. And then almost like the honey really wants to come back into the party. It's it's yeah. you know circling back um, into the forefront of the palate um, as you know, as you kind of go into the finish, it's, yeah. Well, it's, it's like they a, say, ain't no party like a honey party because the honey true. party won't stop. Mm, that is 100% what they say. Going somewhere. back to the apple theme, it's like, yeah, you're, you're slicing up apples mm -hmm. for your uh, snack. Mm -hmm. And then you drizzle over some honey. Then you hit it with like some cinnamon and some yeah. clove. And oh. so you get that sweetness, you get that spiciness, mm -hmm. you get the freshness from the apple. Yeah. Why do we always talk about food? Like it always comes back to food with us. It's weird. Well, because your tasting notes are things you're familiar with, and we are clearly very familiar with food. <laughs> and this smells like so... a pizza roll <laughs> <laughs> and a Swiss so familiar. roll all at the same time. <laughs> and then I think what I also love about it, and then we'll get to the finish. But as you're getting yeah. to the finish, I get that, and it's something I really enjoy. You get that great mouth feel, but mm -hmm. then you also get that uh, that dryness kind of over the yeah. back of your tongue. Which, which is something I, I really enjoy. Yeah, it's very viscous. And, and at, with the finish, like what's really lingering, the flavor that's lingering in my mouth is that honey mm -hmm. with a hint of spice. Yeah. And it's just, it makes me want to dive in for another drink. Mm -hmm. I agree. It also makes me want to sit here and savor <sighs> that flavor too. You know, it's... Yeah. That's, that's why you have a full bottle, my friend. We had this one on the schedule. And the reason why this is so recently cracked, right, is because... We've both known that once we open this, um, one, yeah. we're going to share it with friends because it's a great, unique pour that a lot yep. of people don't have the opportunity to have. Yep. Um, so it's it's a great thing to share and have a conversation about, which is primarily one of the, one of the primary things we love, uh, the whiskey culture, for lack of a better term for mm -hmm. But it's also dang good. Goes with, e dang goes good. with everything. Um, just love it. So one of the things I'm wondering about, JB, so... Mm -hmm. I'm going to guess, you know, their grains local, you know, all these things are local. So I'm guessing, right, that they have a local honey, mm, yeah, you know, honey farm 
beekeeper. Mm-hmm. I would assume so. Are called. I wonder if, you know, you can find out if we can find out who that is, or one of our listeners can find out who that is, put it in the comments. Right. And, and I wonder if that's some honey that you can find and, and we can. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, I would like, so hear me out. I'm listening. You ever do buttered toast, but just honey drizzled oh, over top. Yes. That and a glass of this. Oh yeah. Come on. Right. Come on. And a nice, a nice hearty toast just mm-hmm. a nice oh yeah yeah nice thick grain, delicious. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm. come on but the only thing i fear is so we go on the road trip right we drive yep um, road trip we go um we nestle in nestle the, uh, in the, in foothills. the foothills of the great smoky mountains and we find yeah. the honey but then we forage for the honey yeah but how do we drive because our hands are all sticky from the honey <laughs> i mean there's no sticky way around honey hands it. we're just <laughs> rob sticky honey hands <laughs> We just we show up to get gas and the hands are just stuck to the steering wheel. Like, we can't take them off, but I'm sure it's happened before. Yeah, you know, I, I guarantee. Sticky honey hands. Yeah, sticky honey hands. Rob and his <laughs> sticky honey hands. Oh, oh wow. man, we we've uh, what a trip we've been on today. Yeah, we have been nestled in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains, foraging mm-hmm. with Proofy the Bear for a beautiful honey cask. We uh, we've talked about removing idols from our lives and mm-hmm. we've talked about the the god of pleasure and how he, yeah. here's the thing uh, the these things that we talked about the god you know uh, sex food mm-hmm. entertainment now those aren't bad things by themselves right. god gave us those things for us to enjoy for us to 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 help us you know food is here for us to live mm-hmm. you know entertainment to to keep us you know happy and joyful but the thing is, when when those things replace Jesus in our lives, yeah, that's when they become idols. Mm-hmm. And so, in a relationship with Jesus, we can tear down those idols. We go to Him and we say, "Lord, help me, help me yeah. remove this idol from my life. Help me to focus solely on You." And you do that in a relationship with Jesus. And if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you if you're struggling in mm-hmm. a certain area. Uh, go to him. The series that we've talked about has been, God has been fighting for our hearts mm. from the beginning, all the way back to the to the Garden of Eden. God has been fighting for us. And so when you go to him and you put your faith in him and you put your trust in him, he is faithful to yeah. take those burdens from you. So say yes to Jesus today. And if you don't know uh, what that means, or maybe you're confused, or maybe you have questions, yeah. or, or you want to know how to live out a life in grace, you can reach out to us. Reach out to me. Reach out to Rob. We want to walk you through that. So, Rob, if they want to reach out to us and talk to us about yeah. that, how can they find us? Absolutely, JB. So you can reach out to us at Rob at jbbibleandbourbon.com or JB at jbbibleandbourbon.com. So that's our direct emails, right? So you can also hit us up at jbbibleandbourbon.com slash social. That's going to have all of our social media links, Instagram, Facebook, uh, TikTok, all of the ways that uh, we are out there in the social media. You can also subscribe to the show, uh, audio on the podcatchers and also in video, glorious HD beardedness. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is going to be on YouTube and Rumble. All of that is at jbbibleandbourbon.com slash social. There's also a Patreon section if you want to come alongside and support us. We have multiple tiers at our Apostle and Disciple tier. You can come alongside and really support this, uh, support what we're doing here to bring uh, Jesus conversations uh, over over glasses of whiskey to people who may not otherwise hear. You can support us on those Patreons. And at the Apostle and Disciple tier, we have end of, end of your gifts that JB and I are finalizing, uh, you know, as as we speak here mm-hmm. uh, for this year. Also, you get monthly time with JB and I. We we do Patreon hangouts and some other things coming, uh, you know, later this year and, and into next year for for those Patreon tiers. So jbbibleandbourbon.com slash social. Well, thank you for joining us on another action-packed yeah. honey sticky um, mm-hmm. episode of JB Bible and Bourbon Talk. So until the next time, may the love of God the Father yeah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We'll see y'all next time.